Our final new show of our final new episode of 2023 is here, concluding the first full calendar year of broadcast for Something's Happening Here. And we're staying true to form, ending the week with an AI update. But this is no ordinary AI update. No, rather, it's, it's like the Lord sent this one, this one particular story just for us, as it touches on all of the things that we've discussed so far this week. So from all of us to all of you, have a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. We will replay some older shows for a few weeks, including our Christmas episode from 2022, and we will see you again in January. Welcome to the show. Happy Friday, everybody. Welcome back to our final show of our final episode of 2023. Wow, what a year it's been. We started our broadcast in November of 22, I think. So we've been on the air for like 13 months and a lot has changed since then. So thanks for being with us for that whole time. If you're a, 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 a watcher from the beginning, if you joined us somewhere in the middle, thanks for joining us when you did. You can, of course, go get all of our archive shows. Um, and that would be beneficial to some degree. But since this is a current events show, um, you know, a lot of the stuff from previous episodes will be obsolete by now. So it's up to you if you want to go back and view them all. But you can get access to them all at tdimedia.org. Um, that is uh, our central hub to reach all of that stuff. Uh, there may or may not still be some broken links or some bugs to work out on that site. So if for some reason you can't find what you're looking for, you can also try the old website, TalkingDonkeyInternational.org. That is still a live website, so you can go there as well. All right, but let's get to it because this is an AI update. And uh, first of all, since we talked about this show specifically yesterday, like this show, something's happening here yesterday, I think it's worthwhile to point out that I am not aware of any other program that has regular AI updates like we do. And that's not to say that there is none. It's just, I'm not aware of any other show. So uh, in case you're looking for a reason specifically to tune in here, I just want to point out that we at Talking Donkey International and my, my producer specifically with regard to something's happening here was very in tune with the idea that AI was going to be the thing we had to talk about from the very beginning. I didn't even know that AI was a thing until my producer brought it to my attention. And ever since we, that has been the single most oft discussed topic of this show. So there you go. That's my plug. Why you need to, to continue to tune in day to day and week to week. And by God's grace, maybe help us to stay on the air by using the donate feature at uh, tdimedia.org or by going to something's happening here.locals.com and joining that community for free, but becoming a monthly paid supporter. Either one of those options really helps us out uh, considerably. So please pray about that uh, and, and help us stay on the air. For today, though, what is our AI update? Well, it is a it's twofold. Let's start here with the independent. We're looking at uh, Pope Francis. This article says, Pope, once a victim of AI-generated imagery, calls for a treaty to regulate artificial intelligence. <laughs> that's, a, that's a pretty comprehensive headline. But let's read a little bit into it. The first paragraph says, Pope Francis on Thursday. And Thursday when? What is the date on this? Uh, the date on this looks like uh, the 14th of December. So... Is that right? Maybe it was the 14th of December. In any case, Pope Francis on Thursday called for an international treaty to ensure artificial intelligence is developed and used ethically, arguing that the risks of technology lacking human values of compassion, mercy, morality, and forgiveness are too great. Sounds a lot like Elon Musk there, right? Uh, Elon Musk also believes the danger of AI is simply too great. Third paragraph down says, for Francis, the appeal is somewhat personal. Earlier this year, an AI-generated image of him wearing a luxury white puffer jacket went viral, showing just how quickly realistic deepfake imagery can spread online. That's worth pointing out that if someone produced an AI image of me wearing a luxury white puffer jacket, 
I don't care. <laughs> you know, good for you for thinking that I'm the kind of guy who walks around in luxury jackets. Praise the Lord. I want you to improve my public image a little bit. But the Pope has a different public image to uphold, doesn't he? He's more the vow of poverty, don't live in the world kind of image. And so for him, a fake image of him wearing something luxurious like that uh, can be rather damaging. I also recognize that the Catholic Church probably has more money than any other single entity in the world. Uh, that's probably an overstatement because who's got more money than the United States? But anyway, it is one of the most richest entities on planet Earth and has been for millennia, right? So there are all sorts of images of popes in golden chairs and all sorts of ostensive, um, that's the wrong word, uh, all sorts of like luxury and and pomp and, you know, wealth beyond imagine, imagination. So I'm not saying it's like foreign to Catholics entirely to have this kind of imagery, but Francis specifically has really tried from the very beginning of his uh, papal his papal reign to adopt the kind of vow of poverty image. He even chose Francis as his papal name because of St. Francis, who was a very humble man. So for him, this kind of AI imagery can be really damaging. And therefore, the second paragraph of this article, what does he want to do about it? Francis added his voice to increasing calls for binding global regulation of AI in his annual message for the World Day of Peace, which the Catholic Church celebrates each January 1. The Vatican released the text of the message on Thursday. So how does this AI update factor into our conversation about globalism all week long? It's because every single way that you look leads to globalism. Where the, the Pope, who is globalist in his thinking anyway, if you remember Tuesday's show from this week, um, is now using this attack or this, this image that was against him in, in the ways that we've described as an excuse to go straight to the globalist governing bodies to produce global regulations and global legislation. There is nothing local about this. Like we don't, we're not told in this article, where this image came from. Was it an American image? Was it an Italian image? Was it British? Was it Angolian? Like, we don't know who came up with this image because it's not relevant. He's not looking to, he's not looking for a localized regulation against the country that produced the image or the person who produced the image. He's looking for global rec regulation that will impact everybody using this technology worldwide. It's Revelation 13 stuff right? The whole world marveled after the beast. But it actually gets even more complex. Join me here in msn.com. This article says, Channel One News, the new AI-generated newscast coming soon. This really freaks me out. Okay. Channel One News, a new AI-generated news show, has released its first demo episode, and none of the anchors are human. The full 21-minute video episode comes from the American media startup, hoping to transform the broadcast journalism sector. Founded by producer and director Scott, I'm not even going to try that last name, and tech entrepreneur Adam Mosam. Uh, Channel One will launch this in 2024 to, quote, give users a new, more personal way to watch the news, introducing a new personalized global news network powered by generative AI. So if I understand the producer's intention correctly, he's probably got that first episode playing in the background uh, of this show right now or soon. So uh, you can watch it. You won't be able to hear it. You have to actually go to look at the video from its source to hear it but you can watch it. And if you didn't know that those people that you're watching weren't real, that they don't exist, those bodies aren't real. Nobody birthed those people. They're a figment of the imagination of a computer program. If you didn't know that, would you guess it? Because I wouldn't. I watched several minutes of that video and complete 
in complete awe. See, I've admitted on this show in the past that I use um, AI for various things, uh, specifically chat GPT really helps me to write some portions of the show. And I find it just to be fun. GPT also has an image generator and I use the image generator for various purposes as well. The image generator is like it's in kindergarten. You know, you ask it to, to make a hand that's doing something, it'll give you a hand with six or seven fingers. But like it doesn't know the basic realities of the world. I tried to have it produce an image of the earth at creation, according to Genesis 1, and it gave me like continents full of electric lights, you know? And so I'm trying to like remove the electric lights and it doesn't know how to do that. It's like a really dumb program. <laughs> And so knowing that there is some other version of AI out there that can flawlessly create these entire people and their speeches in multiple languages with flawless backgrounds, utilizing real life news stories, that that's like, that's cybernet level stuff. Um, Skynet level stuff. That's technology that, that, turns my head inside out really because I'm impressed with the consumer level technology that I have access to, but compared to what you're seeing on your screen right now, probably GPT is like, it's got nothing. doesn't even hold a candle to whatever generated channel one news, but there's ethical implications to this too, to agree with the Pope a little bit. Um, I'm generally wary of government regulation of stuff, except that sometimes it really is necessary. And I wonder, Channel One says that it only uses trusted news sources. Well, trusted like how? Like CNN? <laughs> the most trusted name in news? Except I don't trust anything CNN says because the list of their errors is longer than the list of their accomplishments, it seems, you know? So trusted by whom? You're gonna you give me news from um the from from the New York Times that fabricated the 1619 project out of nothing? You know, like is who is to say what is trusted anymore? I trust the Babylon B more than I trust the Washington Post, you know? Like who is to say what is trusted? And Babylon B is not even a real news source, uh, in case you're not familiar with what it is. It's a satire source. Doesn't it seem like this, this Channel One News type AI is actually the type of AI that requires regulation? Because who is to say what is real and what is not anymore? Who is to say what is trusted and what is not anymore? What is to stop Channel One News from creating a, a hit piece? What? Okay, so this just jumped in my head. Hypothetically, let's go back in time three years. And let's say Channel One News is reporting on the Mueller investigation into Donald Trump, okay? Is Channel One News going to tell me the same things that, that uh, Adam Schiff told me, that Rachel Maddow told me, all these trusted names who turned out were saying literally nothing true for three years in a row, right? Why wouldn't it? If it's looking at these trusted sources, it's going to give me these all the things that I'm supposed to trust, but actually I don't trust them at all. I just think it's really wildly dangerous. Um, and maybe they're going to come up with some way to make it less so wildly dangerous, but I doubt it. And you know why I doubt it? It's because most, most of the people in big tech are leftists. Sorry, but it's true. Um, that's why... As soon as uh, the January 6th kerfuffle happened at uh, at the Capitol in 2021, like in lockstep, every single big tech platform from Facebook to Twitter and on down, suddenly, uh, you know, the president was canceled. He was still president for like two more weeks, still the most powerful person in the world, but he couldn't say anything on the internet because all of them have this like lockstep uniform understanding of how the world is supposed to be and it's a leftist understanding so do i really believe that they're going to create a generative ai news program that's going to give me biased or unbiased objective news 
I don't think so. I think it's going to be the Young Turks, you know, or or the Rachel Maddow show or anything that that CNN regurgitates out of its mouth. I think it's going to be all that stuff. It's going to be Adam Schiff and Anderson Cooper just telling me what they want to be true under the pretense of it's so trusted, it's perfect or whatever. It's scary. We're living in a scary time. And, uh, you know, I'm not going to tell you a prescription for it that surprises you. My prescription for everything is go to Jesus. Jesus is the ark at the end of time, right? He is the safety from the flood waters of Satanist, Satanist hell, right? Confusion and mayhem. Jesus is the only safe place. He's the only answer. So that's where you and I should be all the time. But let me give you some scripture before we close for the day, which will also be our closing for the year. Join me in Revelation chapter 16. This is the seven final plagues, the last things that are to happen on planet Earth before Jesus comes. In fact, Jesus does come in the middle of the sixth plague out of seven. So this is literally like it. This is it. <laughs> no more planet Earth after this. The first, second, third, fourth, and fifth plagues are pretty terrible, but they don't illustrate the point I'm trying to make. We don't find that point until the sixth plague. So I'm going to read verse uh, 13, okay? As part of the sixth plague, Scripture says, I saw three unclean spirits like frogs coming out of the mouth of the dragon, out of the mouth of the beast, and out of the mouth of the false prophet. That's the unholy trinity right there. For they are spirits of demons performing signs which go out to the kings of the earth and of the whole world to gather them to the battle of that great day of God Almighty. To really understand the power of these verses, we have to actually be familiar with the, um, the story of the exodus of the Hebrew people out of Egypt. Uh, in the in the BC era, right in the book of Exodus, because there were plagues then too, and there was a plague of frogs then also. And what was unique about that plague of frogs is that it was the last plague that Satan could mimic. He he mimicked the earlier ones, but after that, the the little priests of of Satan, the pagan priests could not imitate what God was doing anymore. So the frogs become representative of the upper level of Satan's power, like the upper limit of Satan's power. Um, therefore, when we see these three spirits like frogs coming out of the mouth of the unholy trinity of Satan, right? That is telling us that Satan is using every single thing that he has at his disposal at that time to confuse you. In fact, verse 14 even says um, that they're performing signs which go out to all the leaders of the earth to bring them into a state of warfare, right? So you know that's clearly not God. God is never bringing us into a state of warfare. He's bringing us away from warfare into peace, and when he has to come to declare war against sin, he does that, not us, okay? So this is deceptive, and it's wicked, and it's leading to violence and destruction, and you are going to fall for it. And so will I, absent of the grace of God. If we are connected with God enough to avoid the mark of the beast, then we will be safe from this. Uh, Revelation 16 is very clear. Only those who receive the mark of the beast are subject to these plagues. But almost the whole wide world is going to receive the mark of the beast. Almost. It says everyone whose names are not written in the Lamb's book of life will receive that mark and be subject to these plagues. So it will be so deceptive that even the very elect will be deceived if that were possible. Those are Jesus' words. We are already living in a time where it's becoming more and more difficult to trust the things that you see and hear because of AI, because artificial intelligence can just create out of nothing something that looks like it belongs in the real world. When we get to the days of Revelation 16, it will make the AI stuff that we're talking about seem like child's play. 
the devil, unlike AI that has no, how, how did the Pope put it? Hold on, let me get that back. No, AI has no compassion, mercy, morality, or forgiveness. Well, the devil also has no compassion, mercy, or forgiveness, but he does have his own sense of morality. It's not the same morality that you and I would ascribe to, Not certainly not God's morality, but he does have his own sense of what's right and what's wrong. And so the devil is going to come and he is going to just force his, his viewpoint, force his deceptions on the whole wide world. And we need to be ready for that. We absolutely need to be ready for that. Let's pray right now because we need, we need, we need God to guide us through this in a way that only he can. Father in heaven, looking backwards at when you took your people out of Egypt, you led them directly as a pillar of cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night. The only way that they could get lost in that paradigm was to stop looking and to actively wander away from where they knew you to be. I am asking for a similar thing in these last days, Father, because the devil is trying to distract us with every single thing, trying to confuse us with stuff that doesn't even exist. And the day is coming quickly when he will use his nearly infinite demonic power to fool nearly everyone in the world. And we need to be safe from that, Father. So please, in the name of Jesus, in the holy name of Jesus, protect us. Give us wisdom. Help us to discern what is right from wrong. Help us to discern what is real from fake. Help us live with actual intelligence, not just artificial intelligence. And seal us for that great day that's coming soon when we can meet you in the air and follow you all the way into eternity. Thank you for bringing all of us producing and watching the show one year closer to eternity. And I pray there will not be very more year, very many more years left. Come and rescue us in Jesus' holy name. Amen. All right, friends, that's it. That's a wrap for 2023. We will have repeat episodes, including last year's Christmas episode, which I was particularly proud of. I thought that was a really good episode. So we'll, we will keep you with things to watch to bide the time between now and when we return with new content for season number four. In the meantime, Merry Christmas to you. Happy New Year to you. Happy Hanukkah to you if you happen to be Jewish. Um, I knew a lot of Jewish people growing up and I, I love the Jewish religion. I just know that it needs Jesus to be complete. So whoever you are, wherever you are, I pray that you will seek after Jesus and come back and join us for new content in January. May God bless you all. Thank you.